My name is Julie Roca. Welcome to the podcast, Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. Today is going to be a very different day. I like to um, answer a lot of the questions that I get asked on a daily basis. And one of the things that I probably get asked more than anything else when people are talking about my podcast is, how are you doing this? Where are you doing this? Who helps you out with the technology? Because um, all of my friends and family know that I am not techie at all. And so I wanted to sit down with Tristan at Chasing Shadows Studios and just have him share a little bit about your mission, your dream, and what Chasing Shadows is for people. Uh, Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, Second of all, didn't remember I was going to be on this. Third of all, I like to think I'm aging gracefully. (laughs) Uh, Chasing Shadows is, I like to describe it as following my lifelong dream of not having to set up and break down equipment every single day. Yeah, it came from a great place. Yeah, so I opened up this space essentially for photographers, videographers, and though it was a late addition, it was a good addition, podcasters, Mm -hmm. um, because I found that a lot of things that stop artists is the pressure of finding the right equipment, uh, finding the space to do the uh, projects, and actually setting the equipment up. Having That is absolutely right. I mean, I was talking about a podcast for months. We were sitting there trying to figure out what we were going to do and how we were going to do it and if we were going to use a cell phone and if we were going to get equipment of our own. And I was researching, and I walked in one night to do headshots with the Gainesville Area Women's Network, and I saw your setup, and I said, oh, I can do this. I have since gotten her a better headshot. Didn't well, do great the first time. <laughs> I'm going to just say this. Don't try to get a headshot at the end of a very long day when you've been running around outside marketing. Don't Fair. do it. Yeah. So so when I walked in, I realized that um, our dream was attainable um, at a very affordable rate mm-hmm. and that you were someone that was going to be easy to work with. So mm-hmm. can you tell us a little bit about... Um, you do headshots. Yes. You do podcasts. Yes. Uh, what else do you do? So uh, my f- first experience is filmmaking. I have 12 years of the film industry, and then that got transferred into photography about four years ago. I got attached to photography because unlike filmmaking, you don't need a whole entire crew to make yeah. a great product. I liked that photography allowed me to just be one-on-one with a subject, and I could kind of do everything. And then when I was opening up uh, this space, which uh, by the time this comes out, it'll probably be exactly a year that we've been open, um, one of my uh, mentors said, if you're going to do something like this, you really should have a podcasting space. And I hadn't even considered that. Wow. But (laughs) then it ended up being a very, uh, very important because podcasts have become... Probably the second most common thing that the studio is used for right behind photography and people getting headshots. Um, And I found a lot of people ask me, like, what kind of podcast do people come in and do? And it's very, very different. There is no podcast that is similar. Obviously, you have your podcast, which there's not too much to say about because everyone kind of probably knows what kind of podcast (laughs) you do, but you have a very helpful podcast about helping people, you know, age gracefully and ease into the next chapter of life. But we also have these stand-up comedians that come in and workshop jokes right before they go on stage, which is really cool. that's awesome. Um, We have a great podcast in here called Laughter or Violence, which is really (laughs) just two people kind of talking it out. The most common reason that people do podcasts isn't to become rich, famous, or known. Yeah. It's really a form of therapy for people. Yeah. um, Which is why I'm probably considering maybe starting a podcast just so I can see if I can get some of that therapeutic uh, relief. Or it can be used as a tool. Uh, It can be. For example, I get the reason that we started this podcast is because I will get some of the same questions over and over and over And I realized that, you know, when I am in conversations with people, a lot of times it's a lot of information. And so 
I wanted something that they could watch it over and over and over right. and take notes. And so this has been a great tool for me. And I know that there are lots of other industries out there that could probably utilize something like this tool. But I love that you said that some people use it for therapy. That's awesome. And I imagine as, as knowledgeable as you are, you still learn things by having guests on oh, so much your stuff. podcast. Like I'm so sure much. you I'm sure you learn despite having a good idea of who these people are. <laughs> yes. Which is another brilliant thing about this studio. It makes me a better artist because when photographers come in and they use uh, the studio, multiple things could happen. Uh, one... I'm going to learn from the photographer. I'm going to see their kind of lighting setups, and I can kind of adapt it into my personal style. You know, I I think it was – it's been attributed to so many people over the years, but I think it was Picasso that said good artists borrow and great artists steal. Um, I think a lot of people don't really know what he meant by that. Um, I can't say for sure what he meant by that, but – Another thing that might happen, I have both professionals and amateurs that are in here, and sometimes an amateur photographer will come in, and they don't necessarily know the rules of photography, so they're unintentionally breaking the rules in genius ways that make me realize, okay, you just simplified something, and you're doing this effortlessly. That's awesome. So, like, they don't even know how to think in the box. There is no box for them yet, so... They exactly. And the, the one thing you want to do as an artist is think outside the box. And if they don't yeah. even know where the box is, they're doing this by default. Which is awesome. That's pretty great. Well, um, and the thing to know, too, is that you aren't just stuck here in the studio. You do go take your cameras still sometimes. Oh, travel, yes. Right? Yes. So I, uh, um, for recently, I've been enjoying studio photography. I like having the controlled yeah. area and everything, but I've done, you know, so many of them. I'm I'm kind of branching out now. So I'm like, what can I do if I take this cool studio equipment and bring it on a cool location with like the cool strobes and the diffusers and everything? But yes, I will do on location photography. Real estate? Yes. I will okay. do real estate photography. That's a fun little like uh it's very relaxing. You know, I go in, I put in my music and I just shoot the apartment or house and okay. whatever. That's always fun. Um, How many events? Like, um, I I have a lot of octogenarians having birthday parties these days right. because we have a lot of people that are turning 100 and plus. Oh, yeah. So um, what about, um, like, birthday parties, weddings, even even memorial services? What about those? Okay, so yes, I will do every event except a wedding. I do not. Uh, <laughs> I do not photograph weddings. Probably I smart. <laughs> I, I film weddings. Okay. Uh, filming weddings is probably like not to sound like a grumpy old miser, but that's probably the most expensive thing I do because I insist on hiring help and yeah, getting yeah. everything right. But I typically don't like taking on anything I can't get a second take of. With okay. most events. I'm good. If I miss one part, I can get another thing. But weddings, you have, like, the pressure to get, like, every single moment as it's happening. I don't want to deal with that. I have no interest in that. You know, if you don't get good photography on your wedding day, it can really be heartbreaking. (laughs) Yeah. Someone came up to me the other day, and they're like, so I, uh, my friend wants me to shoot their wedding. I'm new to photography. I've never shot a wedding. They know this. What do I do? There's literally no way I can get out of it. They insist. I'm like... Shoot on auto and on raw. Godspeed. Let your editing software do the rest. Yeah. I, I wish the oh, best wow. for you. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, um, my first wedding, um, I don't know what happened with my friend's camera, but it, everything, every single picture was dark and um, grainy and, you know, maybe uh, it was a sign. I don't I'm, know. But. I'm, having, I'm having nightmares <laughs> about it just, just thinking about it. I'm not even yeah, asleep. Yeah. Um, so everything but weddings, you're willing to bring your cameras, and weddings you'll do video. Yes, and I will okay. also, if they want to do something a little, like, less pricey for weddings, I will live stream them for people that maybe can't make the event. Oh, that's great. Um, I do a lot of live streaming. I've live streamed plenty of memorials. Um I also make memorial videos. I've made three horse memorial videos. <gasps> I don't know how I fell into that niche, but I just sort of did. Um, And now I have, you know, I have horse memorial assets ready to go on my computer. So, you know, if you've 
recently a lost a horse. I'm I'm very sorry, but I will help you uh, memorialize said horse. Well, I would I would say that that applies to any pet. It does. Probably. Yeah. But I've only ever done horses. Oh, that's pretty. And people, but you know, horses are. Yeah. yeah. Well, is there anything more that you think that our listeners would really want to know? I know I I saw some specials um, that you've posted. Do you want to share that online? Because, I mean, right here and now, they they may be your specials. Do Mm -hmm. you want to share those or do you not want to because someone may watch in five years and you're not going to be held to that? Yeah, well, uh, the one special I don't see going anywhere anytime soon is that if you want to come and use the studio, the first hour is free. I like people to be able to come into the studio and actually try it out, make sure it's something they want to do, make sure they know how to use all the equipment, get a little trial. Um, And you can do each of these things at least once. So, you know, you can try the photography studio for free. You can try the podcasting studio first hour free. And I... Most of the time, I'm here to help you throughout it. I'm not just going to give you the gear and say, all right, have fun. I don't care if you don't know how to use it or something. No, I am here uh, to help. And also with podcasting, uh, we didn't initially have video, Mm -hmm. but a lot of people kept asking, um, can you do video? In fact, I think you were the final, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, the straw that broke the camel's (laughs) back. Where you're like, listen, I am serious. I will use this space consistently if you get video. I have, yeah. And I didn't want to do video until I knew that I could make it as user-friendly as the rest of the studio, which is why uh, you can't really see it right now. Maybe I'll grab a picture and I'll put it because I edit these things anyways. Um, But we do have multiple cameras here, and they are all plugged into a switcher that is currently being live edited as we go along. And... The switcher will give you both, like, uh, how do I say it? They're called ISO files, so you'll get separate files of all the separate camera angles, but it'll also produce a DaVinci Resolve editing file, so you'll have a head start on your editing because that slows a lot of people down, too. They're intimidated by all the editing they're going to have to do after the podcast is done. Yes, and, Um, I mean, just a note here, I do pay a little bit to have those those things aligned because I'm, again... This would never be out right, to the public yeah. if I had to do it. So I do pay Tristan some more for that kind of editing. I don't personally think that we should edit all the ums and the ahs and everything out. I no. like authenticity. So That's the joy of a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love podcasts because it's like you're having a real conversation mm-hmm. with Me someone. Too. And we are having a real conversation. Yes. The other people are just, you know, they're in the corner. They're learning and listening. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it makes me respect an artist a lot more to hear exactly who they are. Um, and now yeah. you know me. I'm very awkward on camera. Um, do you know you know the man behind the camera now, and this is the reason why I'm able to have my podcast, and I yes. thank you, Tristan. Yes. And luckily, I have my wonderful partner right now that is uh, doing the, the switching, partner in the studio and in life. She's wonderful. She didn't know how to use the switcher. She came in. She did it anyways, and I love her for that. So, well, thank you, Tristan. And I look forward to seeing all of the new people that come through to use your, I call it the playground for creativity. That's a good way to say it. I call it the no more excuses space. Oh, I like that too. Yeah. And we're giving you everything. Thanks a lot, Tristan. Oh, thank you. I'll see you very soon. Yes.